Hey there everyone and welcome to another Neo Monsters PvP video. This is continuing on with my Link Fire team that I used during the special rule where everything was stun immune. Um, it was a really strong team and this first one we have a team that actually looks a little bit more like a normal uh, normal time rule PvP with the Aura Dragon. It's got two nice sweepers there and Kana Shogun and Catmander. Kana Shogun is going to wreck my team because his flame eater is just stupidly good. Um, now, I misplay a fair bit in this clip, uh, which I don't know if I realised at the time I was playing, but it was definitely very noticeable when I when I watched it. I think I tried to knock back the Kana Shogun at that point. Basically, Kana Shogun is, is the big problem right now. I sudden death, uh, I sudden death in the previous uh, video as well. I swear, those are like literally the only two matches where I used sudden death. Um, there were ones where like I was looking at the enemy team and I was thinking, this is not good at all. I, I just need the chance, this sudden death. So I did a Dark Bane there because I'm planning to protect a killer uh, Aegis Dragon with the Dragulus. And I can kind of tell he's he's purposely not killing my Dragulus. I think he's worried that his Kana Shogun um, is going to die, or, or the Catmander too. He doesn't want to lose his sweepers. So my Dragulus is pretty safe. Now, Dreamy Entrance hit the Kana Shogun. That's really good. It gives me a little bit of relief from Kana Shogun. Um, he does have like the Pupa Per Purify as well as Aura Dragon Purify. Purify Mist and this Bavolk is purifying as well, so it's going to be woken up, but I've got a little bit of relief from it. Now at this point here, um, I should really be thinking about killing Kana Shogun. Um, I don't want to do it just yet though, because I want to try and line things up a little bit better. So I do protect a killer on Ore Dragon and do this Kinslay on Bavolkus. I'm not entirely sure if it will kill, it does just about, um, so that's great. And my Pupiper, if you didn't notice, it's one second before his Pupiper. So I basically don't need to worry about his because I'm going to kill it off with my own. And for some reason, I kill off Aura Dragon at that point rather than Kana Shogun. I do not know why. In hindsight, I really should have killed Kana Shogun. And I was very lucky that I bypassed the auto taunt to do um, to kill the Kana Shogun at that point. I should have done that the other way around for sure. Um, I've got poison in my team, so Aura Dragon isn't much of a problem. So I didn't need to kill the Pupipa, as I previously said, so killing the Azariados is essential here. It's got poison immunity. When my Pupipa enters, it is the poison one, um, so Azariados is not going to be uh, not going to be easy for me to face. So I remove the shield here. Uh, there's no point doing the, like, the Link Purify Mist or anything. I want to remove the shield as well because then I can kill off with uh, my own Poison Moth. So now he has some sleep stuff. Um, it's Link Water against Link Fire, which is not good. And I definitely need to get rid of this guy, Mirai. So unfortunately, I have to do the knockback with Flare Vern. Um, but yes, uh, Link Water is obviously very strong against Link Fire. However, his Wraith Captain is pretty much pointless. He decides to Ultra Splash um, the Atlantean rather than the, the Dragon. Just I probably would have done at that point if I were him um, because I can take out this Christine. Uh, which is going to be very strong for him. Now he has Moku. <sighs> Team building. Come on, guys. Uh, he's using Aura Dragon. Why would you use Moku when you're using Aura Dragon in the front line? Like, you're going to have revive stuff at the end of your team. He has five monsters behind this. <laughs> Moku is not going to work properly. Anyway, so um, he's got a Spookoid, and I don't want to risk giving him my Gorgawing, so I skip and kill it with a Volkagama instead. Um, it won't actually trigger, but, you know, if it had, I don't want him to have a Death Revenge monster like Gorgawing, especially when all my mus all my stuff's poisoned too, and he's got an auto-poisoner. And then all this Aura Dragon stuff just dies off to my poison. Um, I definitely could have left Aura Dragon on the battlefield for longer. Uh, this is one of these these clips which I look in hindsight, and I'm sure I could have played this a lot better. Uh, but it was a nice close match, and I definitely enjoyed it at the time as well. It was a lot of fun to play, um, trying to face off against... Uh, Kana Shogun and then Link Water. So this next match, we're back to Death Revenge. There was a lot of Death Revenge being used um, in this PvP. And Skeletal didn't quite die. It's a bit of a shame. So the thing here, um, and funnily enough, Hanzo Wolf, I didn't notice. It doesn't help protect, a, like, protect teammates on it. That's the secret skill. Uh, so that didn't actually critical. But anyway, the thing I want to say is one of the funny things about using two... Um, petrify revenge monsters with death revenge monsters is that I can actually use the, I like kill off those petrify revenge monsters first so that I have two rockoids in my team and now when I kill a death revenge monster there's a 50 50 chance that it just hits a rockoid so there's a little bit of like counter synergy there 
Um, and I would recommend if you're going to run Petrify Revenge stuff, don't don't run it like directly with uh, Death Revenge. Maybe run it with um, Payback Revenge instead, because that will kill the monster that kills it, i.e. not one of the Rockoids you just made. Um, so yeah, bear that in mind when you're doing this in team building. So I can see he's got Link Water stuff going on. Unfortunately, he has got the number one X, which is water, so he's able to do the Link uh, Link Give Turn. Uh, sorry, Link Double Give Turn. I got the Nico finisher though, so I can take down that number one X, and it did kill one of my Rockoids. So now I've got you know three monsters back in play. Um, now my plan here is pretty much to lock out this Flake Drake. This team goes on to have a mid game and kind of end game which is not the strongest and so this is you know this person's obviously a weak person uh they, they haven't got the collection that i've got um but you'll see this that i can kind of pick apart the enemy team so even though he had this really awkward death revenge start um i was able to do what i said with the creating the two rockoids and then killing the death revenge so you know one of the two um death revenge things hit one of the rockoids um, and then I can like just lock this Flake Drake out of play. Flake Drake is not a monster that's particularly good in top level PvP. Um, I've also tried to kind of mess up this Karakenshi by putting it on low health. So those two monsters I'm basically leaving out of play and I'm getting off the other two. Um, so the Rockoid's annoyingly blocking my raw moves. I have no idea if this man eater will kill the Yuki. And then it does! So that was really lucky. I don't know how much how much health the Yuki has. I think that only just killed it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> really lucky there. Um, so now I can uh, just about in time do the raw mark and kill off the Atrahasis. Um, I know I'll now be able to pass enough time for my Pupa Purr. So things are going well for me. Um, it should all start lining up. And I'm able to cut off this Yuki every time it comes in uh, before the Flake Drake gets to do its actual damage move. Um, so things are really not looking good for my opponent. There's not much uh, that they can come back with. And my poison stuff is now coming in. Uh, that's going to really wreck his team. So I do the poison massacre here. Um, rather than the double poison eater. Um, because it's going to... I'm going to leave that spectre fox now. Um, I'm not too afraid of it. Sorry. I'm getting off the spectre fox. I'm not too afraid of what he has in his team. Because I know all he's got is like those death revenge cloners. And the Gravodius, I'm never afraid of a Gravodius. It's just like Flake Drake. You can just slow down the enemy team by killing off the, the right things. Um, as long as you're in an okay position, basically they're not a problem at all. Uh, so yeah, I just keep killing through these enemies and um, slowly taking it out. Sleep Killer the Yuki. Probably take down the Pal Palerian at this point. It can't really do anything, but I may as well kill it off. Um, and I decided to take down the Flake Drake at this point as well, because I know I'm near the end of his team. I'm not going to keep slowing it down. I'm just going to kill off the monsters now. Uh, the Dreamy Entrance from Sweet Feather. It hits the one monster of mine which can put, be put to sleep, which is a bit of a shame. And yeah, he can see he's lost, so he just disconnects. Um, yeah, poor guy. I'm sorry to him. Uh, this, this is the case of he probably was a lower player who has um, quite a nice front to his team that probably carries him a little bit. So I kill off the Hell Fox first because that will um, guarantee that my Mantaferno, you know, stays alive. If I kill the Nibelronix, my Mantaferno might have died there uh, before it got a turn. So I did that. Then it went to the Spectre Fox turn and he's disconnected. So that's it for this video. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I've got some more Linkfire stuff coming from this special rule time uh, coming soon. And yeah, I'll see you then.